Hello, hello! Greetings, greetings! Welcome back! I'm Griffin Gaming RPG, and, I, and today is Thursday the uh, 9th, and uh, I'm glad to have you guys here with me. Upti, what's going on? You are first! How are you, my friend? I hope you're having a good, good day, a good Thursday. Um, today, we are with uh, this Star Citizen this week. I always want to say this week in Star Citizen. I gotta stop doing that. Star Citizen this week. Um, we're going to talk about all the things that are going on within the Star Citizen community, at least some of them, not all of them. <clears throat> um, it's been a busy week. Um, seems like things have just kind of done a 180, I think, um, to a certain degree. Oh, standing in line for lunch. <laughs> okay. What are you, what are you having for lunch? If you don't mind me asking, what are you, what are you, uh, what are you having today? Or where are you? Is it a local restaurant? Is it a chain what is it that you're um you're doing for lunch <clears throat> um of these telling me his lunch menu here um yeah it's like i said it's been like a 180 you know i think about a month ago there was a lot of sentiment that uh things were so slow and so dead and nothing was going on and what's happening with cig and now it's like 180 degrees right it's like an over like a flood of, of stuff buffalo chicken sandwich Oh, okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. You know, I'm not a big hot, spicy person. Buffalo wings are always kind of okay. You know, I can eat them, but I, I just, I don't know. I have no tolerance for, for any form of heat or spice. I can do the spice a little bit, but heat kind of isn't my thing. <clears throat> and I'm sometimes jealous because people are always eating hot stuff. And then I go there and I have to ask, is it hot? And of course, people who eat hot stuff say, no, it's not hot. <laughs> I never trust anybody who eats hot food to tell me whether or not a food has heat to it or not. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, Abdi, I know it's not even a it's not even a thing, right? I get it. Trust me. I know Ethiopian food. I've had it. I mean, actually, I enjoy Ethiopian food, but um, I have to be careful about what I eat. Same thing like with Indian food. Everything. You know, I have to be real particular about what I eat. <clears throat> but anyway, I hope you have a good lunch. All right, so let's jump into it. Um, again, we're uh, talking about what's going on in Star Citizen this week. Um, as, as I was saying earlier, it's actually been a fairly busy week. Um, things seem to be, like I said, a month ago, creeping and slow, and people were wondering if anything was happening. And 
now it's like there's this overwhelming flood of stuff that's happening with uh, the star citizen community uh let's see what i got going here <clears throat> give me one second here folks i'm trying to get my screens together here in twitch <clears throat> which i should have had done earlier i'm not finding the thing i have to look at later um not it either okay i'll find it later anyway let's jump into it let's talk about what we got going on because there's a lot 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 going on this week in the, the star citizen community um let's see first off let's look at the actual official letter of star citizen this week and if my mouse wants to work here <clears throat> striking a pose with the um one of the armors that they showed us in pyro with one of the pyro gangs which was interesting it was very interesting i got a chance to watch a little bit of that video last night uh i'm not going to even attempt to pronounce that zizulin hi everyone i don't know uh but we've been thrilled to welcome you to all to pyro on the preview channel for the first time the teams are incredibly grateful for the staggering amount of positive feedback we've kept a watchful eye on your experience so far both through our back-end data and your collective comments and we couldn't be more excited about the future of the verse while there's only a few play tests left for now, you can find our updated schedule here, which is great. They're going to have an updated schedule, which I will bring up because I had not looked at it yet. <clears throat> if you're looking for even more pyro goodness, we recently released a Galactopedia update with details about the system. Learn more about the company that discovered it and meet some of the people who live there. While our eyes are still full of stars, you can now replay many of the presentations shared during Citizen on 2953 on YouTube. We prepared chapters and timestamps for you to easily navigate and scope out the content that interests you most. If you joined us in Los Angeles, you might have had your picture taken on our Drake Dragonfly. Enjoy the photos from Saturday and Sunday. Beyond the show, many development teams diverted their attention to the upcoming patch releases planned to close out the year. Have a look at Star Citizen's monthly report for all the latest updates on ships, locations, missions, and more coming soon and into 2024. Our roadmap roundup also offered... Uh, early look at what's coming in Star Citizen 3.22. Come back to that in a second as well. Um, let's see. Now let's see what's going on this week. Uh, Monday, we had the announcement of the IAE IE 2953, the Internet Galactic Expo. Uh, the biggest ships show in the verse. Returning to Microtech, we're going to be back in the cold planet. Star Citizen will be free to play from November 17th to November 30th. Plus your recent questions about the RSI's latest ship found in the Q&A for the RSI Zeus Mark II. Um, you know, I, th I really think, and I could be wrong, but I think that this IAE, uh, free fly is going to be ridiculous. Um, I think there are going to be a lot of people who are going to tune in. Normally Invictus is the one, but I think this one's going to blow out Invictus. Um, uh, you know, you can quote me if I'm wrong, but you know, I think with all of the, um, attention that's been drawn since CitizenCon, only just two weeks away. Um, and a lot of, uh, content creators who maybe had not looked at the game before or weren't interested in the game before, or were waiting to see how things would turn out. Uh, have put out a lot of positive information about people checking out the game. Doesn't mean people are going to buy stuff. Maybe they will. Maybe people will buy packages and maybe they'll start to understand it's only $45 and not $300 to get in. Um, but I really think that, um, this particular free fly is going to be a real turning point for CIG. Um, let's hope that everything's stable. I know CIG has been doing some patching still to, uh, 3.21. Uh, and, uh, let's hope that they get it in a really good place. I was in it yesterday, had no problems. Um, things ran well. Hopefully it'll remain that way. Uh, cause I think there will be an influx of people. And obviously, uh, I know CIG wants to put its best face forward when it comes to new people who may be interested in the game. So let's see how that goes. By the way, don't forget, <clears throat> you guys can join me in chat. You can click on the link that'll bring you into the Discord channel with me. If you have any thoughts or comments about anything that I talk about today, I'm always happy to hear from the community uh, when it comes to these topics. All right, Tuesday, they published the subscriber monthly newsletter in the subscriber com link, which we'll look at in a moment. Um, <clears throat> there really wasn't anything special, I don't think. Um, this Wednesday, the teams will post last week's Squadron 42 monthly report. Uh, Thursday, they will do a special edition today of Inside Star Citizen, looking behind the scenes at CitizenCon that we had in L.A. 
before returning back to the schedule programming. Um, I'm really kind of hoping that um, CIG does do a little bit of behind the scenes and also highlights a little bit more of what we didn't see. Everything was focused on the main stage, which is understandable. Uh, but there was a lot of things going on, a lot of conversations, a lot of people meeting people out in the lobby, uh, in the dining area, in the marketplace. Uh, there was just a lot going on that you guys didn't really get to see. Uh, and obviously, there's only so much time to show everything during a live event. But I am hoping that they'll get to tune in and show a little bit more, particularly from the marketplace. Some really cool vendors that were there. All you guys got to get was a, a bird's eye over vibe or the overhead view of the market area. Uh, but hopefully there'll be some video in that area too, so you can kind of see how things were laid out and who was there participating. Friday, Star Citizen Live returns with the first of several weeks dedicated of Q&A follow-ups to CitizenCon presentation. This week, presenters from Navigating the Verse and Fix It and Fly It will address their questions live. So that'll be great. So if you guys tuned into those two episodes in particular, Navigating the Verse, Fix It to Fly it. Navigating the Verse was where they showed us the whole new thing with the uh, the star map, getting around the Moby Glass, uh, and also Fix It, Fly It, which was really great. That was the one on the engineering uh, and all the cool things that we'll be doing with the new engineer station, things of that nature. So if you watch those episodes and you want to see some Q&A for that this Friday and tomorrow, be sure to tune in for that. Um Let's see. That was from uh, Lenek. I don't know. Niku. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I hope it's Niku. I really don't know how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry if I'm slaughtering his name. Uh, here's the schedule again for this week. Um, we are going to take a look at this uh, community MVP for November 6th. Um, and it was called the Pyro Visual Guide. Mojo Monkey offered a visual guide through the central planets and stations of the Pyro system with cinematic shots of each point of interest and soothing music throughout. A wonderful vi discovery video. I have not had the opportunity to take a full tour of Pyro. Uh, I've only been to Checkmate Station and Obituary. Um, that's all I've done. <laughs> and I think about it, it's not a lot. Uh, there was a lot when I was in there. I was in there for an hour both times, and I've both places I spent a lot of time. In Obituary, I got involved in a, a hangar fight with some folks from Test Squadron. That went on for an hour plus because they were there longer than me. And when I was at uh, Checkmate, I just spent time wandering the station and looking around and was pretty blown away by what I saw. So I haven't had a chance to really delve very much, but uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll get a chance to take a look. But let's take a look at this video. Well, you know what? Before we do that, let's do. Let's see. Uh, let's do the Pyro Preview Channel update. Uh, we're absolutely thrilled by the positive reception from those embarking on the first journey to Pyro. This is, this is not only immensely gratifying, but it sparked contagious excitement across all of our studios who are tuned in. We kept the watchful eye on your experiences on the back end. We read that up part already. Uh, let's see. As shared in our initial messaging, we want to emphasize the availability of the preview channel will fluctuate based on testing and analysis needs, both for this test and future tests to come. It's an inherent nature of the preview channel. In other words, that's why the channel isn't always up, gang. Uh, they're going to update us with the schedule below. Remind you that the plan is to host more tests. Okay, so here's the schedule. We already saw this. Today is the 9th. All right, so they're doing the U.S. today, 12 p.m. Pacific. So that's in another hour and 45 minutes. This will go live. Um, 8 p.m. UTC. All right, that'll go live in a couple of hours, and then uh, it'll be live tomorrow on the 10th for the EU. All right, so be ready for that, gang. Um, no new times yet. We'll see what they are later. Uh, oh, okay, no big deal. All right, most of us can convert time. All right, uh, let's see. Roadmap Roundup. This was from the first, this was last week. We already read this, right? Yes, we read this already. So no biggies there. <clears throat> the Galactopedia, there were changes made here, which I missed in October because we were gone. Um, but here's a lot of the information that they said that they put in, in relation to Pyro. That's there now. So you guys can do your homework, do your due diligence about the system. Uh, Pyro 1, Monox. The Akiro Cluster, Bloom, Pyro 4, Pyro 5, Ignis, Batra, Adir, Pharaoh, Fuego, Zur, Terminus, 
Ruin Station, uh, Pyrotechnique Algamated, <laughs> Algamated, can't speak. Uh, let's see. Citizens for Pyro, law abiding citizens with eyes on the Pyro system, the Fire Rats, the Headhunters, Rough and Ready, and Checkmate Station. Just got finished watching the, um, the character uh, one yesterday, and it was really cool to see um, how in depth they had gone uh, with the Headhunters, Rough and Ready, uh, seeing the costumes and stuff. That was really, really cool. I missed all that at Citizen Con, so it was nice to sit back and watch that yesterday. <clears throat> okay. Um, I just, I've been to Checkmate Station. They don't have the other one here, though. Yeah, they don't have... Um, maybe it's just, this is short articles. Yeah, they didn't put obituary in yet, so I'll have to check that out later. Okay, uh, let's see who's here. Marzipan, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome, everybody, who's here. Again, uh, Admiral just dropped in with me. Admiral, you there? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Hey, how are you? Doing pretty good. Yourself? Good, good, good. What you have a comment about? Uh, I just um, came here to keep the company in Oh, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Are you working today? Okay. I am working, so I'm not watching the stream, but I'm able to talk. Uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this um, visual guide to Pyro. I haven't seen this. So let's take a look at this, blow it up here and uh, raise the volume. And here we go, six minutes long. Uh, now nah, I don't wanna watch it in there. That's not a good view. Let's get a bigger, better view. Uh, where is it at? Pyro preview collective media. We'll replace that with this. All right. There we go. All right, gang. I think that's better for you all, too. Here we go. This video is mostly for you to end. It helps if I put the audio in for you guys to hear the audio, right? Give me a second. All the technical stuff was in the wrong place today. All right, here we go. Enjoy some visuals with an introduction to the Pyro system, finally opened up to testing for a group of lucky Star Citizen players. Whilst the whole system isn't yet available, the central planets are, and so this video will show some of the things you can expect to see in Star Citizen's next star system. Pyro. Yeah, I'm going to do it Saturday, um, BSL. I'm, I'm not prepared to do it today, but I'll, i got to play it for Saturday. Well, 
was very difficult to keep from talking too much for this one, but hopefully you enjoyed this visual guide to the Pyro system. If so, you might press that like button to let me know to make more videos like this, or subscribe to ask YouTube to show you more. As always, thank you for watching, and who knows, maybe I'll see you out and about in Pyro. Barrister did a good job. Great job, Ferrister. That was good. That was very, very nice. You know, and again, that's just a, a small portion, right, of what um, of what Pyro looks like. That's, I mean, there's still two or three other planets, and then there's the belt, there's other stations. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, if, if for those of you who haven't been in, when I went into the um, the map to look at um, to look at uh, Pyro. I didn't expect the star map to have as much stuff that was in it. It was like, I had to like zoom in because there was so much stuff stacked on top of things. Um, even though it's still a big system, right? And like I said, I haven't traveled a lot of locations in there yet, but I was amazed at the scale and how much stuff was there. It makes Stanton look bare, you know? I mean, I mean, well, Stanton is bare, but you know what I mean? It, it makes Stanton look like, oh, there's nothing there. I thought Pyro was going to be like more like a nothing there, but it's like way more stuff. I'll be one of those players that will nearly never go to Pyro except for quick cargo runs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it'll be interesting to see black intellect, um, what the reasons will be to go to Pyro because CIG is going to have to put reasons to go too, right? I'm trying to figure it out because they say that the belt that's there really got stripped out pretty good. Does that mean that there's nothing there? No, it just means that it's been the majority of it's not there enough that a corporation would want to stay. Will, for a single miner person going out there mining, will they find some stuff? Maybe, maybe there's some rare stuff. Maybe there'll be something that will open up that we'll find that maybe we didn't know was there. 
maybe the mining won't be based upon the belt, but maybe it'd be based upon the planets or the moons uh, where we start dealing with, you know, mining on, in ground. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what will happen, but it is a big system. You know, it is a big system. Uh, I know people worry about the players, but I've said this before. The players are one thing, but the NPCs will be another. And I think that um, there's, there's going to be a great amount of balance that happens when it's because this system is definitely much more a gang, not UEE, but a gang ran system and reputation is going to mean something. And uh, I think you're going to have more encounters dealing with gangs and NPCs in time more than with players, <clears throat> but we'll see. Let me ask you a question, Bruce. Yeah. Um, just since I know you've been there, I know some people are talking about like as soon as they leave the station, they're getting a tenant. Is that true just for like from real players or the NPCs attacking ships? As they leave? I don't know. My my engagement when I went in, um, I, you know, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> when I play Star Citizen, I play it tact tactically. Okay, what I mean by that is I don't fly ships because it's my favorite ship. I fly a ship because it's what's appropriate for the moment. You know what I mean? So when I left, when I went to the kiosk to figure out what am I going to fly, because obituary was like 25 million kilometers away. So, okay, I got to get out of here. First time leaving. I don't know what's outside. I keep hearing all this stuff. And uh, I said, what ship's going to get me there? Now, I know you're going to laugh when I say it, but I got a starter ship. And I got net. And right when I was quantuming out like at 90%, somebody target locked me and I jumped out before they could target lock me. And when I got to obituary, I got there and I think someone scanned me or something, but I just went in and flew right in the station with no problem. And it's a big station. It takes a little while to get there. It's not like you fly right in because I had never been there before. So I had to freaking find the, find the hangar. Um, I don't make myself a target. So in that particular case, if I go out flying with the MSR or some other ship, that's first of all going to paint a big target. Secondly, everybody in your mama's going to see it. Thirdly, am I carrying cargo or doing something weird? I'm asking to be targeted. I fly base. If it's just me and I'm not doing nothing, I don't need to break out my such and such, you know? So I, 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 you guys always hear me say this about starter ships. Starter ships are going to be important. You people dismiss them. But if you don't want to be paid attention to and you want to get around faster and meet somebody or go somewhere and survive, jump in your freaking starter ship. You know, the 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 the, the, the spool up times are fast. They're hard to target. They're, they're quick to accelerate. Um, and, you know, you, you can spawn them and despawn them wherever you're at in 30 seconds. You know, um, now there were people when we were in, to answer your question, Admiral, when we were in L.A., I think BBG in particular, ran into NPC encounters. I think he ran into two or three, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, not person, not players, that he had to fend off. I think Ubdi did too. I think Ubdi ran into some NPC ones too. <clears throat> but that was when they were away from the stations, I think. I think that they were someplace else or whatever. Um, so there is NPC engagement in the game. There are settlements that you can go to that are definitely ran by gangs. When you go there, they are going to attack you on site. No questions asked my understanding. Uh, but like I said, I haven't visited any of those other locations. Now, there were people complaining because in the first few days, people were spawning, like, you know, camping outside the elevators. People would come down from their hab. As soon as they come off the elevator, somebody would shoot them, you know. And that's just people being people doing the dumb stuff, which, you know, we know happens. Um, I, I, the two or three times I went in, I never had that happen. And now, I was at one station where, where it was armistice. It couldn't. I was at another station where it could. And everybody was running around minding their business, doing their thing. People would be running past you going to go do something or on their way somewhere. So I never ran into that type of thing, but I know there were people who did run into that. So I don't know. Um, Black and elect. I love that it's in though. Yep. Make station safer. I would imagine things like med supplies will sell for yeah. High prices. Yeah. Yeah. There may be some, you know, lucrative reasons to go to pyro black and elect. Maybe it's not your favorite place to be. But if you know you can get in and make a quick buck, or if there's a mission that says that there's a gang who's willing to pay you some stupid amount of money for something, and if you're on the okay with that gang, you know, you might just go in, drop off your stuff, and leave. Doesn't mean you got to set up shop, set up house, you know? Okay. Let's uh, move on here. What else do we have here? We did the Galactopedia. Uh, the Q&A. Um, 
RSI put out, not RSI, CIG put out the Q&A for the RSI Mark II. Um, let's take a quick look at that. Admiral, did you uh, buy a Mark II or do you holding? Are you holding off? You gonna get it again? Um, I didn't hold off on it. Uh, okay. And uh, I've got some ships that are close to it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Same here. <clears throat> um, the universe has never been the same. Anyone with even a passing knowledge of aerospace history will be familiar with the legendary Zeus and its undisputed role in humanity's conquest of stars. Originally prototyped by the by the 2100s as a commercially viable transport utilizing a streamlined quantum drive, the ship had a rocky start when early test flights were public went publicly awry. Luckily, this would be this would be legacy was eclipsed by the subsequent efforts of Navy test pilots Michelle Saleno and her hand-picked squad, the original 999th test squadron, who worked with RSI to redesign the Zeus's hull before successfully completing a historic test flight in 2137. Let me ask you a question, Admiral, before we get to reading about this thing. Do you think that um, buying the Zeus was hype because of its lore? Oh, definitely. Uh, oh. I mean, there are some, there's a, there's a one or two people I could, I could just call out right now who'd be like, oh my God, Zeus. I'm like, what the hell is this? It's like, I don't care about the Zeus. <laughs> and they were like literally freaking out. And like, so, um, <clears throat> Yeah, it was kind of funny, but yeah, I mean, it's a cool ship. It's nice that, well, quote unquote, in, in Lord and Iris, I would do this. I mean, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Getting okay. Whatever. But uh, it's a nice looking ship. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Kai, yeah, Kai's, Kai's in just dropped Kai's in, in, as well. in as well. Kai, hello, Kai. hello, hello. I didn't want to interrupt Admiral. I wanted to let him finish his point. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, unpopular opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I love the way the RSI Zeus Mark II looks. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's amazing. I'm super uh, excited for it. I like that that design. Mm -hmm. But I wanted the old concept art for the Zeus. If you remember, mm -hmm. remember like a year ago, they released a trailer, the one that had the smoke and the ice and all of the whatever. Mm -hmm. And... For those who don't know the, the lore behind the Zeus, the Zeus was the first jump-capable ship. It was the first ship that that made a jump. Um, there's lore about a special Zeus that was on the far side of uh, Saturn or something in our system that crashed and then went missing, and they went back later to try to find it, and they couldn't find any of the people, mm -hmm. and it's like a whole ghost ship thing, whatever. But here's the deal. I come from Elite. You guys know that. I come from Elite Dangerous. Mm -hmm. Elite mm -hmm. Dangerous put out a set of and and elite dangers has not put out anything worth being interested in 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 years except for uh they put out uh on their little arc store you can buy this nasa looking outfit and mm. it, it sold like hotcakes and mm. the thing that i loved about the zeus that they showed off in that trailer from uh a year or so ago maybe maybe 18 months um it had the feel of the space shuttle and as yeah. a child of the 80s i <laughs> love that i look at that space shuttle design mm -hmm. kind of spaceship mm -hmm. the way the way i look at christina hendrix that ca <laughs> can't get any better i don't care if you make something that's technically better it's mm -hmm. not as good yeah. as christina hendrix if you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so like for me i love this ship I love it. Don't get me wrong. And, and and I think they should sell it. I'm happy that they're selling it. Yeah. But yeah. I really, if CIG, I've promised, I've already stated because of another issue that I'm not giving you any more money until mm -hmm. um, Star Citizen releases mm -hmm. because I got mm -hmm. pissed off about another thing. Mm -hmm. I will make a liar of myself <laughs> if you put out that one that looks like the space shuttle or if you remember, Griff, I know you're old enough that you remember. <laughs> Remember from the 1981, the Buck Rogers where, and it looked like the space shuttle and he was in that and it yes, was like 90% yes. of it was the space oh, shuttle, baby, baby. but it was like 10% mm -hmm. kind of modified a little bit to make it look sort kind of like what they futuristic. did in Armageddon. Kind of like what they did in Armageddon. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, bro. Yeah. That right there where it's like 90% space shuttle, 10%, you know, steampunky, you know, MacGuffin, mm -hmm. ooh, cool shit. 
if CIG, if you put out that, I will go back on my word <laughs> and I will give you cash right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because not because it's better. This mm-hmm. thing right here is better. Mm-hmm. This thing, this the, the one that they have is clearly better. Yeah. But for those of us, let's be honest, this game isn't for 18 year olds. Mm-hmm. The the average star citizen player oh. is a 40 year old forum dad mm-hmm. who was a child of the 80s who loved Buck Rogers who wants to bang Princess Ardala, who wants to fly around in a cool Zeus that looks like the goddamn space shuttle. <laughs> I, will, I will say this to your point. Um, when I heard that the Zeus was in the code, could you turn your speaker down just a little bit? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Let me turn it down. Um, just a little bit. Um, when we heard that the Zeus was in the code, I got excited. But I also said, I know they're not going to give us the one that we saw. Um. I, what I kept hoping, Kai, that they were going to do was not put out a Zeus Mark II. I was hoping there was going to be a Zeus Mark III or IV, mm. and that they would later, and I don't know if CIG will do this or not, because this has come up in they relation could. to other ships that they produce. Like, there are certain people who bought the Vandal ships who they appreciate the updated version, but they mm-hmm. still want access to the old version because that's the one that kicked off the whole thing. It's the one they fell in love with. And they've said, you know, CIG, is it possible that you will keep that old version in the game? Yes. Um, And so with the Zeus, I was hoping kind of along your lines that they were going to put out a Zeus Mark. I'm going to say Mark four. okay, Or or a Mark one replica. And and then right. And then they were going to do either a Mark one replica or Mark two. That was Mm -hmm. a more modified because like you, when I bought into Star Citizen, I, the first ship I bought was the freaking Avenger because it reminded me of the space shuttle. And like you said, I'm a child of that generation. It was so reminiscent of it. And of course, when I saw the Zeus and saw the lore, I was like, wow, they took that to that same level. Then like you said, Buck Rogers had it. We saw it in movies like Armageddon. And so not to be funny, but we've got that one big, I forget what the, 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 the Zeus, right? The suit, right? The, the, mm-hmm. the, the Zeus. I'm like, and, wow. And- Greatest thing ever. Greatest thing ever. And so to me, it was like, that would be the perfect match with that ship. Now, will they give it to us later as a museum piece? Or, you know, if you want to have one as a collectible, cool (laughs) telephone. But anyway, that's a good point. No, it's okay. It's a good point, though, you know, about the Zeus. Good point about the Zeus. Okay, let's uh, let's jump in here on this um, this Q&A real quick. Uh, The Zeus Mark II is smaller than the Spirit, but its cargo variant holds more than twice the cargo of the C1, more than the Mercury. Why would someone choose a C1 spirit over a Zeus? Firstly, the Zeus, is, uh, the Zeus ZL cargo variant has three size two shields. The four size two shields, we yeah, have the four size four, yeah, the four size two shields are reserved for the ES exploration model. We'll be discussing this more in the near future, but due to upcoming changes to components to support the resource network, we'll be doing a big rebalance of item numbers and new, and excuse me, numerous existing ships. So expect other ships to see numbers changed. Now this, this has been a question. Um, this is the first time that I feel like, and I, this is just for me guys. So please don't take this as me speaking for the world. This is one of the first times where I felt like saturation is happening. And what I mean by that is, is that um, a lot of times when ships come up, I look at them first off, it's like, okay, do I feel like they're doing a good job? Do I want to support them too? Uh, is this something that I think I really want to work for in the game? Or is it something that I feel like I don't want to work for it? So maybe I'll just go ahead and get it. And when I looked at this ship, the first question was, yes, they're showing progress. But the second question was, I have ships that do very similar to what many of these Zeus ships do. There's only one of the three that I was considering getting. And it's only because I've been blowing it off in game because of pricing. Now, you know, guys know I have a rule my rule is if it's less than 300 bucks, I don't buy it. The reason why is because I want to have things in the game that I can work for, but I'm past the days of grinding. I don't want to grind for months and months and months to get a 600 I or week. I don't, that's not me anymore. I've been through the grinding part of my life. So I buy the 600 so I can enjoy it. But then it also allows me to work for other ships. Anything that goes from zero to 300 bucks, I'll, I'm willing to work for it. That's just my formula for me. It's not for everybody. It's just my formula. Um, in this particular case, the Zeus EX, I mean the ES, I've got a Aquila, 
I've got a 600i Explorer, I've got a Dur, and so I've got a 315p, and I was like, okay, is this something I need to buy? And the answer can is I, no. Yeah, good. Good guy. Can I make two counterpoints? Sure. The first is this. Number one, we know that the selling of ships is what funds the continuation of right. the game. Right. So they need to put out product, even in a saturated market, they need to put it out. That doesn't mean you need to buy it. Right. They need to put out product regularly. Right. They need some people to buy it in order to keep this project going. Right. Right. Now, you can make an argument that that's a poor funding model, that that's uh, this, that that's that, whatever. But it is what it is. If you're here, you're here, and you've made your peace with it. Mm -hmm. The second counterpoint that I will make to your point, and again... It doesn't mean that you're wrong. I completely get your position of saying, I already have coverage in the field. I don't need any more. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Thanks, though. But as a refugee from Elite Dangerous who has not added, like, Frontier Development have not added a goddamn ship yeah, to their no. game in seven years. Yeah. If you make a spaceship game, <laughs> mm, put in spaceships. <laughs> So when you say like, I, I get your point and your point is 100% correct. 100% Griff. There is, this is not, this is not a unique ship that serves a purpose that cannot be served by other ships. But in the car market, you've got the Corolla, right. the Hyundai Sonata, the Kia, blah, blah, blah. The mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. You got 19 goddamn car makers. They make cars that are basically, basically the, the same. same. Mm -hmm. And right. the fact of the matter is, is if I have to choose between a computer, uh, a spaceship game developer mm -hmm. that makes spaceships mm -hmm. and a spaceship game developer that says, we have 34, there's no reason mm -hmm. for more. Mm -hmm. I'll take the former Any 10 day. times out of 10, yeah. twice on Sunday, I'll vote. I'll, 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 I'll keep voting. Yeah. I'll vote early. I'll vote often. No, like the good. Democratic Party. <laughs> I, I just <laughs> like the idea of more ships, not less ships. And yeah. if those more ships conflict or overlap or whatever, then we get to the point of capitalism. And the point of capitalism is A, B, C, and D do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I like the look of A. Yeah. And you like the look of B, yeah. and and Fast Cart already owns C, mm -hmm. and Fist to Face mm -hmm. just loves the name of D. Mm -hmm. Like consumers can make their own rational or irrational reasons for choosing stuff, right? But if I have to live in a in the universe of a spaceship game, mm -hmm. I would much rather have spaceships, <laughs> six hundred spaceships, and eighty percent of them have something else that does the same job. Yeah then 30 spaceships and it's unique because choice is good. Right. And, and I agree. And, and that was the, my point of where I was going when I said saturation. Gotcha. Sorry. That's okay. Saturation for me, because I, when I look at what I have in my fleet, as much as I would love to buy something, much as I would there's love nothing that's meeting that need for me right now. But like I said, there's only one. And the one ship that is, is the MR because I've been vacillating about the, um, the um, Mantis, mm. the, the Antares, and the, um, you know, any of those ships that do the e, 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 EMP stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the and, tackling. Basically, right. in EVE, we call right. it tackling. Right, tackling because I wanted, I wanted something for doing bounty hunting. And so right. the, the Cutlass Blue felt like too much overkill. Like, that's like for somebody who really mm. wants to do bounty hunting. It's got like 12 freaking compartments in it. The Mantis didn't allow you to carry anybody. The Hawk was only a single person. Then I saw this one. I said, oh, this one does like two to four people. You know, maybe I'll do this one. But then what pushed back on me again was it mm. fell under the less than $300 mode for me. Gotcha. So and, and, I, and so that's again, great. that's why I said that I got my you... boundaries so that I'm not yeah. always buying. But again, to your point, I do applaud the fact that we said earlier, one, that they did write on the lore of the Zeus because there are people who are very interested in the Zeus history. Uh, right. Secondly, that RSI has stepped up because a lot of people have said that RSI has been kind of the sleeper manufacturer. Nothing really had been coming out. Um, right. And so I like the fact, like you said, that they have done this next generation RSI thing, which I think is very cool. 
Um, but I just want to tell people because we're so close to IAE, and that's another reason why I thought it was a good time to mm. wait. You know, you know, if you want to buy it now, that's fine. But they're giving you the 10-year insurance with this now, and they're going to give it to you during IAE as well. So my thing is, let's wait and see until Citizen Comic comes up, because there may be something else there. And if you buy this now, you may say, oh, man, I bought the Mark II. Do I need to melt it? Blah, blah, blah. I'm saying just give it some time. Let me get some- me play. Let me play a good pseudo co-host here for a moment and say Black okay. Intellect popped in, but then he was bleeding through on comms. I think he might be whatever. Black Intellect, pop back in. Yeah, please. And do. I will shut up the second you drop in and then you just <laughs> go so that you can share your point because you had something you wanted to share and then you saw that you were bleeding through and you left like, oh, shit. Yeah, come on back in, buddy. Come yeah. on back in, Black yeah. Intellect. Um, let me finish reading this part here while we're waiting to see if he pops in. Secondly, the spirit is much more agile, has a higher top speed than the Zeus. Oh, okay. Favoring maneuverability and not getting over raw SCU carrying. Yes, every ship has a trade-off. That's basically what they're saying. Um, what is the range of the QED and the snare damp and or a snare dampener? It is just a quantum dampener, not a quantum enforcement device, which combines snare and dampener. Okay. The range will be similar. So you guys know what that means, right? It means that it'll keep somebody from jumping. It does not snatch people out of quantum jump. So make sure you guys know the difference in that. Are the EMP and quantum dampener pilot controlled? We're aiming to allow any seat to control the EMP and quantum dampener, though if this causes issues, we're restricted to a subset. On the MR security variant, the gunner and co-pilot will both have control of one of the remote turrets. Okay, that's good to know. That's the one I was interested in is the MR. Uh, let's see. Is the Zeus Mark II CL able to travel through small jump points, making it the current largest cargo ship to do so? Likely, yes. Though there are lots of changes coming regarding jump points and their size restrictions as the design has evolved significantly since the first was discussed. Expect more info as we get closer to Alpha 4.0. Okay, this is actually a good piece of information, gang. Um, some of you guys know that ship sizes are supposed to be tied in relation to what uh, wormholes you can go through, what jump points you can go through. Um, I try to avoid using the word jump gates. I know we've talked about gates in the past, but CIG just uses this term jump points. So I think we'll just leave it as that. Um, but, um, for the freelancer was one of the ones that used to be like the biggest size for a small. Um, I don't know. They're saying now that this Mark two CL might be the next scale up. Things change basically. But the thing I want to highlight here is that they said in 4.0, the closer we get to that, that's when ships will be designated and we'll know exactly what's supposed to go through jump holes, which also might mean that at 4.0, that's when the jump hole will be put in. Okay. And you know, we've talked about the fact of going from the three series to the four series means that there's something significant that changes both in the technology and development of the game progression of the game. So let's, maybe this is a hint. CIG is letting us know that when 4.0 comes out, jump points will be working. Okay, that'd be a great thing to know. Okay. Uh, yes, the wormhole sizes remain on the current Arc Star map. Yep, very interested in 4.0 changes. Yep, yep, absolutely. Good to see you, BBG. Uh, why do prisoner boxes need extra space? Is it possible to place them on a cargo hold grid? Prisoner pods can be stored in cargo grids, but take up relatively large volume, and items cannot be stacked on top of them. The prisoner pod area on the MR allows them to be stored in a more su- efficient meat rack formation like the Drake Cutlass Blue without compromising space. Uh, pretty interesting that they decided to be funny with some of these responses with the meat rack formation. Um, yeah, uh, I can see some of you guys capturing somebody, putting them on your cargo grid, and then stacking boxes on top of them. I definitely could see that. But CIG says um, they take up a lot of space if you do that. There are designated slots on the MR to put them. Are there any escape pods? The beds are designed escape pods. I'm sorry, escape pod beds and eject out of the bottom of the ship. Sleep tight. That's good to know. Um, Admiral, I see you're back. If you got something, just feel free to jump in. Uh, the room opposite the armory and the MR looks empty. What is its function? This is a room for armor and suit lockers and storage. The angle of the interior shot just didn't show it well. Okay. What is the Zeus's top speed? As the ship is in active production, this value is ever changing, but it will be lower. Then the spirit C1. So those of you who have C1s, you know, 
it may not seem like a big deal. I know a lot of times people think, well, this has got the bigger cargo space. I want to get that one. Um, but if, you know, <laughs> um, if any of you guys have ever flown a, uh, a, a whole A or a vulture out of atmosphere, you'll know why I'm laughing. Um, there are other factors that are going to come into play with these ships. One of them will be gravity and weight. And, you know, you may say, I want the, the CL because I can put more stuff in it, but you will have to factor in what it means to depart out of atmosphere, movement, maneuverability. All those things will become a factor with an atmospheric flight, especially an atmospheric flight. So just, I'm not saying don't get it. I'm just saying, be aware what the trade-offs are, right? It's, it's just like saying, if I want to leave from Orison and I want to get in my 135, and you decide to get in your MSR, I'm going to dust you leaving the atmosphere because that's just the way it is, right? Uh, yeah, your MSR can carry stuff, but I can get to my destination faster than you. So think about what the trade-offs are with these ships, you know, and again, wait till the stats come out too. You know, you really want to know the stats if you want to be a smart consumer on these. Um, as the Explorer variant will have more shields, will the Bounty Hunter variant have significantly heavier armor to compensate? That is the goal, yes. Trading shield power for armor to allow the MR to weather the target's fire, okay? Does the Zeus have fuel recovery? Yes, all Zeus variants have fuel intakes capable of generating hydrogen fuel. For those of you who don't think about this, it's a very cool feature in the game. Um, I fly around in a couple of ships that I never have to refuel almost all the time when I go back and forth because they generate their own hydrogen fuel, which is really nice. Uh, Cindy Sanderson, cargo. <laughs> yeah, cargo is not light as air. No, Cindy, you have you have struck gold. You have hit the light bulb for the day so that you can let people know, Cindy. Let them know that cargo will have weight. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Is the top remote turret pilot controlled? Currently, the gunner seat will control the bottom turret on all versions. And the co-pilot will control the top turret on the MR and the tractor beam on the CL. Okay. So think about that. There is a gunner seat. All right. Handles all of the bottom turrets, co-pilot, top turret, and on the MR, tractor beam on the CL. All right. So, you know, think about that when you think about crewing out your ships too. Uh, I know that there is this desire um, to take... <laughs> I don't want to say this the wrong way because I, I can't help... I can't help saying it sarcastically. Um, there is this desire to take multi crew ships and solo with them. Okay. I, I, yeah, I get it, you know, but it's a multi crew ship. It's, that's why it's called a multi crew ship. Okay. So, um, oh God, I, you know, I don't even know how to attack this subject, Admiral. Um, <laughs> you know, um, they, they like to sell all their ships all the time and, and kind of get them. Well, I, it's like taking, I mean, okay, like I have an 890, right? Um, and I'm going to compare this to taking a yacht out in real life. Oh, God. If I owned a yacht in real life, yeah, I could take it out by myself. I could. And I could enjoy the ride. Um, but God forbid something happened. You know what I mean? Assuming all's perfect and no problems, and I decided to sail my yacht from North America over to Monaco, uh, you know, to watch the Grand Prix, right? Um, yeah, but on the way, there may be rough seas. There may be piracy. There may be a mechanical failure. Uh, there may be some other difficulty. Um, you know, it, it, I, don't get me wrong. If people want to take that chance, God bless them, you know? But I think that this push to make multi-crew ships soloable pushes against logic. <laughs> I don't know what other phrase to put. I don't know. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying, but don't force it that a multi cruise ship should be soloable. Should be. Can it be? Possibly. Could be. Yes. But not should be. I, that's my two cents on that. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's all that risk that they inherit. Um, and that's fine. That. That, and that's it's, fine. It's, 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 Character, they could do that. And the SIG is let, letting us explode the universe by ourselves if that's what you want to, if that's what you want to do, which is great. Um, and it's funny because that 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 uh, the program I've talked to you about before, like sailing Uma, like the, the like he was helping somebody else sail a little sailboat, 
first corner and he was like, Hey, I need an extra body here. Because, you know, they're doing a long distance and they, you know, you need someone to sleep on that thing. So yeah. in, in real world, it's like, yeah, you need an extra hand for even what would people would think is a small ship. And in this case, like a three man, um, you know, ship that the RSI just delivered. What the hell is the name of it? Um, but like it has three people um, and you should, it should be manned by three people or at least, I would hope you'd have at least a At least person, two. Maybe yeah, yeah, at least a co-pilot. Oh, yeah. God. Well, you know what? I think that, to your point, Admiral, I think that as they start to flesh out the mechanics of ships, like right now, every ship is soloable, you know, pretty much, you know. Um, but as they flesh out the mechanics, I think that the players will start to see the need for additional players to protect their investment. You know, right now we can fly around in just about anything. Like, you know, like I said, I can take my 890 out and fly it around. And I've done that before. I've gone out by myself and flown it for the sake of just flying it out and trying it out. But if I'm going to do something in game, um, and, and I'm talking about once things are added, such as wear and tear, possibility of mechanical failure, um, NPCs possibly attacking, um, those things right there may be the things that put the guardrails up that make me think differently about taking a certain ship out. Or if I do want to take it out, you know, I'm going to contact some people and say, hey, I need to do this. Or I'm going to ride with somebody else maybe and let them take the risk. Um Chimpasta asked the question, do you think that players really want bases and feel that having a bigger ship will give them a base? Um, that's a good question, Chimpasta, because I think CIG does want us to think of our ships as being our home and where we live. Um, space stations and places like that, don't get me wrong, they also want people who decide to say, I want to set up a, a settlement somewhere, that that's their home. But I think they want to give us that feeling across the board. Those of you who played Eve, you remember how in Eve, we always had to go to station. You know, at the end of the day, you you had to park in station. Um, and CIG doesn't want us to have to feel that way. They want us to be able to have that flexibility. I, with my luxury account, I'm, I know I'm sounding crazy when I say that, but you guys know I have another, I have two other accounts. And one of my account has nothing but luxury ships in it. In that account, I do fly my Phoenix as my home base. It's a multi-crew ship but I take that ship out and I fly it as the one ship that I fly as my home base. Um, and I, and, and, and that's when I feel like I want to do my luxury thing. Now, when I'm flying around on my own, I might fly the 100 I, or I might fly the, um, the 300 I when I'm going places. But when I want to go to like, go out and go to sleep in space, I go there, I go in the master bedroom and I go to sleep, but it's also a lonely space because I've, it's, it's a multi-crew space. I would love to have somebody else on the ship with me. Um, but all those ships I bought for social reasons. I bought them because they're there so that when I want to hang out with friends, I can say, hey, guys, I'll, let's get on my ship. Let's go. That's the only reason why I have those ships. No other reason. I'm not looking for them for gameplay. I'm really not. Um, my main account is about gameplay. Um, but anyway, I, I'm just mentioning this about these roles because, you know, I, I think that it's going to be important that when people buy ships, as the features kick in, if you're buying it for a solo mode, you may find there's some difficulty, some controls you just may not be able to do because you have to have that co-pilot or that person in a turret or that gunner or that medical person. Um, you just can't do it because it's just not physically possible. Anyway, I'd be, I beat that horse to death. Um, what are the intended roles for each of the three crew members regarding the bridge seats? One is a dedicated pilot seat. The others are co-pilot and gunner specifically. In terms of roles, we don't want to lock players to set roles within ships. So whilst naturally one player would be flying the ship, the other two are free to assist in navigation, defensive via turrets, offensive via missile operator mode, EMP, quantum dampening, or deal with engineering issues that arise, which is what we just talked about. Can the Zeus Mark II MR be equipped with red, blue, and white warning lights like the Cutlass Blue to appear as a law enforcement vehicle? This isn't currently planned, but we'll see as we go through production. Um, I'm not so sure that anybody's going to see your lights flashing <laughs> when you're going after them. It's a cool little thing, but I don't necessarily feel it's necessary. Um, uh, you know, law enforcement. See, that's a tough one because who's the law? I mean, are you, are you like declaring yourself the law? Are you doing it because you're enforcing um, something for the UEE or you're enforcing something for some other law abiding somebody? Or are you doing it to troll people and make people think that you're the law? I mean, you know, 
I'm not even sure it's that necessary, but if somebody wants it, hey, I've added Haas. Uh, does the Zeus have an external docking collar? There is indeed an airlock with our small metric docking collar with a ground ladder access into the room to its right, providing a second and third entrance to the ship, respectively. I did not know that. I did not know that there was a docking collar. That's pretty cool. I think it's on the left side. Okay. Oh, right there. Oh, yeah, this thing's bigger than it looks. Jeez, OP. All right. So those are the Q&As for the MR. Uh, Admiral, you held off on yours. I've held off on mine. Uh, this may be definitely something that I will work for in game, though. To Kai's point earlier, uh, and, you know, Admiral and I have had these conversations before about ships and where we'll put our ships and stuff. And um, you, can you ever can you ever have enough ships? Not in the universe, you can't. Um, so um, I will definitely get this ship and have the, probably get the ES. Um, my, you know, maybe eventually get all three working for them in game and have them scattered in different places in the verse so that they're accessible to me. Okay. When you say scattered throughout the verse, do you want multiple ships of this version? Or do you Not of this like version, but multiple ships. Multiple sh of this type. You know, um, I'll give an example. Why, why select a ship over another ship? I mean, you should just buy, like, you know, you should have, like, eight, eight, eight nineties. Yeah. That's like your ship. Yeah. You want one person. But that also on. that also diminishes is their value for me. Um I, I I'm looking at it more from the perspective of what the ships offer. Um for for example, uh let's we let's, let's talk about like this the CL. Wow, that was loud. Let's talk about the CL. Let's talk about the uh Zeus um the Zeus uh CL and the spirit the spirit C1. Uh I like the Crusader as aesthetic. I like the Zeus aesthetic. Um, is one going to be better than the other? I don't know if that's the case. I think it may be a matter of preference, but I'm just saying for the sake of variety, I do like the ship. Would I rather have three C1s or rather, would I rather have a, 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 a Connie Andromeda, um, a, a, a Zeus CL and a Spirit S1? That would be my preference just because of that. Um, just for variety. That's it. Um, they're compromises for all of them. Cause obviously if I get one, I know what the performance is of that one and I get used to the performance of that one. But for me, I, I would like to be able to have a little bit of the different ships. You know, um, if I bought the MR, for example, would that mean I wouldn't buy a, a Cuddy Blue? I don't know. You know, if, if bounty hunting attracted me enough that I decided I want to get one later, maybe I would. Um, but there are, because I'm into cargo and industrial, I have no problem with having, you know, dipping my fingers into all the different manufacturers with those. I would not do that though with uh, every category of ship. Like I don't, you know, I don't, I don't see myself doing that. It's just me, my, my weirdness when it comes to something like cargo and stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that was my, my thing. Cause our conversations before was like, you know, I would rather travel someplace to get a ship. Yeah. Yeah. I and, go and, back and, and forth to move my fleet someplace. Right. And, and, and don't get me wrong. There are people who love doing that. I, I get moving the fleet because that's a cool thing, especially you have the facility to do it. You can, you know, if you decide to set up a certain place, because here's the reality to your point, there will be certain places where it's a good time to be there. And then there'll be times where it's time to move on, you know? Um, but because of what I want to do with mining and stuff, I see myself being in various places um, just depending on what's going on. So that's why I see my fleet being scattered in different places more than like if I like, mind you, maybe if I one day I decide to do like a settlement and I decide to set up somewhere, I might consolidate myself much more at that point, more than when I'm looking at it from the industrial side of what I do. You know, um, I see yeah, how that, that works. I wouldn't, I wouldn't move the whole thing, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the bulk, I get it. Okay, um, let's look at this subject here because this came up just the other day, uh, the last ISC that we got that uh, Disco did when he was at the LA office, they talked about the ship trespass. And um, th th there's a lot of questions. People were excited to see the ship trespass was finally moving forward, but there was also a lot of questions about it. Uh, some people felt like uh, ship trespass gave the trespasser a little bit more edge over the owner of the ship because the owner of the ship was not notified in any way that someone was on their ship, they would have to check their Moby. Then we found out that they were going to take that away. So even looking at your Moby wasn't going to tell you anything. And people felt like, oh, the trespasser is going to get the drop or have the advantage. Um, 
And then there were some people who felt like, um, well, that means now I've got to search my whole ship. You know, if I've got an MSR, you know, I think Gomop mentioned this the other day, uh, you've got to go through the whole ship and go through the underground areas and everything else and check it before you leave. Uh, and I felt that was a bit cumbersome too. Um, I think that there are some things that players have just gotten used to being able to do. And again, this goes back to this whole thing of the ship that we, the game we have now versus the game we'll have later. People have gotten used to the game being a certain way and the game is changing and it will continue to change. I think CIG is on the right path with this. I think it needs to be refined, but I think that as they put out their ideas, we go back and tell them, Harry, this is how we feel about it. And then we'll together, we'll hone it out and get it into a good space. Um, but let's read this. This is from Bayor of Red. Greetings. We have updated the interior of ships so now to now be a, a trespass zone to those who are not granted permission to be there via the party system. The trespass zone does not convey a criminal status, but it does allow the owner to expel the trespasser by more aggressive means, able to legally attack with repercussions. More for more for a more detailed description of how it works, please see the patch notes. Give us a try. Let us know what you think. Um, Luke Presley goes into this whole thing here and great breaks this thing down a little bit. Hi, I want to provide an explanation of the new ship trespass feature as it is complex and just like the castle doctrine that, that it emulates, it is open to exploitation. And since it's not always possible to interpret player intentions, we might make a wrong call in rare cases. The ship trespass feature gives innocent vehicle owners and their party the right to legally defend their vehicle from uninvited guests with lethal, with lethal force if necessary. However, Players with a CS3, Crime Stat 3, or above forfeit their legal right to defend their vehicle, as do players who have committed a hostile act on other, another player for as long as they are considered hostile. Those who have entered a hostile player's vehicle will have the right to remain aboard the vehicle even after the owner is no longer considered hostile. Okay, so let's take this bit by bit here. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is basically saying if you have a Crime Stat 3 or higher, that means you've murdered somebody. Somebody can come on your ship and they are not considered trespassing. They can come on and kill you. They can come get their bounty. Okay. Or they can just kill you if you've got a crime stat three. Okay. So, you know, this is, this is one of those things for turning the tables the other way on the bad guys. Bad guys have to be careful, right? They've got to be just as careful as people who are innocent have to be careful. They've got that stat. Somebody can board their ship. They will not be notified of it. And that person can kill them. For other players to be considered invited aboard, they must be in a party with the vehicle owner. Party members that are kicked while the aboard will not be considered trespassing. Now, this throws me off a little bit here. Other players to be considered invited aboard, they must be a party member with the vehicle owner. Okay, that's fine. Party members that are kicked while aboard will not, will not be considered trespassing until they leave the ship and re-enter or until they commit a hostile act. This is to prevent players from exploiting the feature to lure others aboard and kill them after kicking them from their party. Okay. So everybody gets that. You got to, if you're in a party together and you get on the ship and the owner's there, you can get on their ship. If you've been kicked from the party, this happens a lot of times for some reason in an org, somebody has to leave the party and come back. They will not be considered hostile unless they leave the ship and come back on. If they leave the ship and come back on, they will be considered hostile. Um, please keep in mind, this has nothing to do with you being friends or being anything like that. They have to be in your party. If they're your friend and they come on your ship, they will be still considered trespassing. If I'm reading this correctly, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what it seems like this is saying. They've got to be in your party to be considered non-hostile. Okay. And that doesn't mean you got to kill them. It just means they're going to come on and get a trespass. Those players entering a vehicle they are not allowed will see a warning notifying them that they're trespassing on another person's or player's private property. Whenever a player sees this warning, they should have they should know that they can be legally attacked and killed should they remain. When trespassers are killed, they do not receive a crime and are not sent to prison by default. By default, they would simply what wake up in the hospital. However, it should be it should be noted I'm sorry about that my daughter was saying goodbye 
By default, they would simply respawn in a hospital. However, it should be noted that there are reasons a trespasser with a crime stat 3 might respawn in prison after death, but these are circumstantial and not related to the ship trespass. That's interesting. Hmm. So if you got a crime stat 3 and you come on my ship and I kill you, you might wake up in prison but not because of anything else. It might be because of what you did before you got on my ship. Okay. But if you just trespass and you don't have a crime stat three, you wake up in the hospital. Interesting. Should a trespassing player leave the vehicle, they will remain hostile to the vehicle owner and their party for a short time, no matter how briefly they were trespassing for. This is to remove the griefing potential of briefly crossing the threshold and backing off to go the ship owner into shooting them while not technically trespassing. All right. So this is to keep somebody from going, nah, 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 you know, hopping off and on your ship <laughs> and you can't shoot them when they jump off. If you come on their ship, as soon as you get off, you do not get the, you do not get the trespassing clear and you're still vulnerable to be shot. Okay. Tr ship trespassing also covers vehicle trespassing inside of other vehicles. Should a player's vehicle enter another vehicle uninvited? In other words, you fly your Pisces into somebody's carrot. The owner of the vehicle being trespassed upon and their party should be able to legally enter the trespassing vehicle. Should that vehicle then exit? Once again, those players are entered legally. They entered legally while it was trespassing would have the right to remain as long as they remained on board and did not trigger the hostility themselves. Okay. All right. So once again, those players are entered legally. Okay, yes. Okay, that makes sense. All right. A nonviolent method of removing trespassers has been implemented, but sadly it relies on players being scanned by security ships, which is something players aren't able to trigger directly. Should a vehicle with a trespasser be scanned, the trespasser will be sent to prison with a misdemeanor trespass infraction. Now, one of the things I'm hoping that they'll do with this too, um, we've got non-lethal means coming in to attack people. And so... It will be kind of cool if when someone comes on your ship, you can do something that is non-lethal. Um, killing them is, I mean, if you want to kill them, that's fine. Don't get me wrong. Um, but there also may be some benefit to doing something non-lethal to someone as well. Um, you knock them out, uh, put them in a prison chamber thing, you know, something like that. Um, maybe they'll do something that way where you can actually make money. You know, if someone trespasses on your ship, if you knock them out, put them in a thing, take them to the prison joint, and then you get paid for dropping them off. That would be cool too. Make money off of them, which would be even better to me, you know. Um, but we'll see. You'll be spacing the trespassers. <laughs> yeah, Captain Joe just says, I just open the back door. Zeus, <laughs> suck them out. Um, let's see. I noticed that some on that in some B-roll on the announcement led to some incorrect assumptions. So to clarify. Ship trespass does not change the rules on drawing weapons within an armistice zone. Even within your own ship, it was never the intention. All right, so somebody boards your ship in an armistice zone. <clears throat> you cannot take out your weapon still. Cannot take out your weapon. The final thing to note is that this change, cha this change only party members are automatically... The final thing to note is that with this change... Only party members are automatically added to your vehicle chat channel, so you'll no longer receive a notification for every person that is on your ship. This is to create balance and give stowaways a chance to sneak aboard without detection. <clears throat> All right. So, again, you can't check your Moby Glass to see and do a head count. Uh, you will no longer be told there's somebody named JoJo on your ship and you don't know who they are. Um, will this mean that you have to check your ship? I think it means you need to check your boarding process, you know. Um, will you have to sweep through your whole ship? I don't know. Um, but I do think you need to pay attention to when you're boarding your ship. Um, yeah, I've never had anybody board on me yet to this day. Not saying that it won't happen. But I'm usually pretty particular about my surroundings. I don't leave my door open. Um, you know, when I go on, I make sure there's nobody around me. Uh you, you, you did get boarded once. When? Oh, you were in space. You got attacked and you got sh shot up and then they boarded you. No, 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 no. I'm talking about a, 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 a stowaway. 
Stole oh, I can was stole away something. Yeah. I've never had nobody sneak on board my ship is what I'm saying. You know, I've yeah, had people. Have, a few weeks, I'll help you. <laughs> yeah. I've had people say that they've had, you know, people stowed away on their ship. They didn't know it. Um, I, I haven't had that happen yet. Um, and I've heard people talk about it before, but it, I haven't had it happen. Um, not saying it can't happen. You know, Admiral says he's going to give it a try. So we'll see. <laughs> Hostility is generated I, when a player commits a hostile act on a player considered innocent. It could be global, which allows other innocent players the lawful right to defend the victim or personal person or or person personal, which allows only the victim and their party to be lawful right to defend themselves. Both place a timer on the hostile during which they can lawfully be attacked. The timer is reset and increased should they continue to commit hostile acts and is reset to its current max should they be shot by those with the right to self-defense. This is to prevent the hostility timer from running out while the hostile is still under attack from the other victim. Ship trespass triggers the personal version of this, so turrets won't fire on a ship just because it has a trespasser on board. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so again, CIG will continue to refine this. It's not there yet, but um, yeah, definitely, guys, get a chance to read that, double check it, make sure you understand how it works. Especially if you're one of the bad guys. Make sure you know how that mechanic works. It's something new that we're going to be working on, okay? Okie dokie. Uh, Zombie Pig, what's up? Good to see you. Glade, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, let's see who else came in. I'm, I'm going to see everybody. I think that's everybody. Captain Jones, I didn't get to say hi to him, but I know he's there. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Why is that not allowing? There we go. All right, let's take a look at this next tab here. Uh, what is this? Oh, the November um, subscriber flare uh, is the Cure Life uh, Med Gun, and they've given it to us in multiple colors here. Uh, the subscriber promotion, uh, and when things go awry, exclusive colorways of Cure Life's indispensable paramed pin will have you back in action in no time. Um, interestingly enough, well, okay, th th this is the flare. The Paramed from Cure Life is a professional-grade emergency medical device designed to stabilize patients suffering from possible life-threatening injuries. The Prismatic Collection features exclusive colorways for this vital piece of medical equipment. I want to talk about this a little bit. Let me zoom this in some so you guys can see this thing the right way. Because that's too big. Okay. Um, they've given us these three ones. The Oxide version, the Xanthic version, and the Vinyl. Uh, screw the color stuff. Okay, the color stuff's okay. You know, no big deal. All right. What I do want to talk about, though, is what is happening with medicine. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, purple is right. I agree with you, zombie pig. Um, if you guys have not gone to Pyro, um, there is a new med pin that has been implemented. The new med pin, when you wake up in Pyro, is on you when you start. You get two of them. And those med pins are for radiation sickness, radiation poisoning. Um the medical profession is going to start filling out more. Um, when you get shot in Pyro Admiral, the red pin now stops your bleeding. And now all the pins, if I'm remembering correctly, they now function the way they're supposed to. So, you know, the only ones that used to work before, like really work, well, they, they worked before. But now that red pin is no longer the cure-all, if I'm making sense. So... Detox pins are important. Having an oxygen pin is important. Um, having the pins that deal with, um, you know, if you um, get a torso injury or a head injury, uh, they're all important. Um, and so now medical is starting to spread out more. And we as players need to become knowledgeable about that because having that just one universal hit that fixes everything is, is going to start going away. So I want you guys to be prepared for that. Go in and read with each of those different med pins. I think there are six different ones. If you add the new radiation one, that's seven. Learn how the med tool works. This particular um, med tool works, the Cure Life med tool. Learn how the one works that works with your um, um, multi-tool as well. Um, because giving people the right type of medication is good. When we were having the fight in Hangar 11 in Pyro at Obituary, people kept medding themselves up trying to stay alive, but then eventually they started getting drug overdosed. And so their movement was reduced from 100% to 80% to 70% to 50% to 40% where, yeah, they were alive, but they were moving so slow 
that they couldn't run away when an NPC started shooting at them and they'd get shot again. So you got to have a detox. So just be aware that all these different med items are going to become more and more important. And if you aren't knowledgeable on what to use, you will be the victim. You will be the victim. Okay. All righty. Um, last but not least, IAE. We are seven days, 22 hours, nine minutes away from the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Um, this is the annual event that many players look forward to. Uh, it's the, it's the event that we tell many people that want to buy ships to wait for, um, for several reasons. One, uh, probably 90% of the ships in the game are sold at IAE. Um, secondly, uh, insurance at IAE of 10 years is offered for those who want to buy something. Normally you buy something in maybe six months to a year sometimes maybe even two years, but if you do it at IAE, usually uh, your ship is insured for a 10 year period. Um, it's also a great time for people who decide that they want to refine their fleet. Uh, some people want to, they thought they wanted something they don't want it or something else came out that they want uh, or something that they want to melt, go up to, you know, upgrade to uh, with via CCU. Uh, it's an opportunity for people to refine their fleets, min min cut down on their fleets. Some people expand their fleets. Um, some people begin building a fleet, um, but this is the time to do it, IAE, so in seven days. Um, it's going to last for 10 days. Um, usually there's two days um, for each manufacturer and the days stagger. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, we had a raid for Montoya. Wow, thank you, Montoya. Hello, everybody. Good to see you guys. He got out. He got done before me. Usually we finish before Montoya. Hey, Boomer. How are you? Doc Flanagan. Good to see you. Django, thank you for that follow. Messer, thank you for the follow. Captain Thorne, thank you for the follow. Just Sig, thank you for the follow. Uh, Tech Prayer Tour, thank you for the follow. And Rain, how are you? Thanks for the follow. Thanks, Montoya. Really appreciate it. Hope you had a good stream. You quit a little early today. You must be tired. Uh, Proto Star, thank you for the follow. Spader Elite, thank you for the follow. Uh, is it LinkedIn? LinkedIn Joke, thank you for the follow. I hope I got it right. Noble. Noble late, no, noble later, <laughs> noble later. Thank you for the follow. All right. Um, okay. I'm going down too far. That was two days ago. Okay. Um, Jared, thank you for the follow. Um, let's see. Uh, again, Montoya, I hope you had a good stream and I hope you had a good, hope you're having a good day today, buddy. Uh, see you in a little bit. How do you download this game? Yeah. Just, just go to the web, go to the RSI website and watch the videos. You'll figure it out. <laughs> thank you tech. Thank you for that sub. Appreciate that. Thank you for that. Oh God, that's really sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the sub. Really appreciate that. Yes, Montoya is subbed. Give, 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 give Montoya a sub. He needs to he needs to come over here and watch once in a while. All right. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to IAE. Um, as I said, um, this is the time of year where everyone gets pretty excited about the event. Um, we're not really sure. We do know that it's going to be back at Microtech at the Tobin. Center, once again, uh, IAE returns, New Babbage, Intergalactic Expo, biggest ship show in the verse, in honor of the galaxy's premier aerospace event, Star System will be free to play from November 17th to the 30th. Head to the Expo for this and more. Test fly over 100 spaceships and vehicles for free, new vehicle announcements, special edition vehicle paints, in-game items, we'll see you there. Um, I said this earlier when we first got started, I really, really believe that this IAE will be huge. Um, not because of ships being sold, but I think that uh, this this is a unique situation. Right after CitizenCon, within 30 days, we're launching right into um, IAE. Um, and as you guys know, there's been a lot of buzz, a lot of hype, a lot of interest, a lot of attention that's been given towards Star Citizen since CitizenCon. A lot of curiosity. Uh, a lot of mainstream gamers who either were waiting on CIG to see what was going to happen, didn't care about what CIG was doing, uh, were unsure about what CIG was doing, have recently given it a second look and taken a look at both Squadron 42 and the Persistent Universe. And, you know, regardless of how you feel about CIG's marketing, their marketing hit the nail on the head. Um, that opening video that they showed uh, of the tech, of what people have been investing in, uh, really rattled a lot of people. Uh, I've watched a couple of people who actually said, now I see why people threw money at this game. Uh, before that was not what people were saying, <laughs> not by any means. 
Uh, but there are people who's after they've seen it. And, you know, it's just one of those proof is in the pudding things. Um, I know there were some people who talked about, you know, when Chris Roberts at the convention, uh, you know, people wanted to hear from him, not hear from him. What was he going to say? And I said this the week after Citizen Con, Chris Roberts let the work speak for himself. Uh, there was no need for him to give any big speeches um, beyond him just thanking the community. Uh, but he allowed the work and CIG allowed their work to speak. And it has drawn a lot of attention. So I believe that this particular um, free fly that's coming up, 17th through the 30th, is going to be one of their biggest. Normally Invictus dominates it. Uh, but this time around, I think it's going to be big. Again, let's hope CIG keeps the servers in a really good place. They seem to be running pretty good right now for 3.221.1. Uh, 3, let's hope that continues uh, so that people get a good experience, um, particularly new people who come in. Uh, and I think they know that it's important after all that video and after all the hype and all the attention and all the marketing and all the hard work for CitizenCon, not good to allow IAE not to be a good experience especially for people who are coming in. Those of us who've been around for a while, we've had the rocky road, right? Sometimes the servers are okay. Sometimes they're, ah, you know, that, that's us. We get it. But I think that they want their best face forward on this one. And, uh, and if anything, for backers, I think this is going to be a great time for you to invite people to come into the game. I'm one of those people who does not invite people to play Star Citizen. I, for years, I, I, this is no joke. I have probably told five people, <laughs> five people over 10 years you need to check out this game you need to sign up and you need to get i've told some people to sign up but i've but, but only about five people i've ever said you need to download this game and play it because i know that people's brains cannot process and handle this thing i am finally at a place now where telling people you should check out this game it's free this week you should try it out and play it i'm i feel very confident at this particular point to be able to tell people that uh so you know, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're, we're getting there. The light is at the end of the tunnel, you know? Uh, it said, was it Red Wolf? Hey, Red, how are you, Red? Good to see you, buddy. Um, yeah, that's what I think about that. Okay, let's keep going here. Explore the possibilities of the of the universe. Okay, let's see. The, this is the expo schedule. Let's look at the video. And uh, I mean, this doesn't blow up well when I do it in here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it big screen for you guys. And then we'll come back to the screen. Here we go. Experience a universe of possibilities. Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2953. All your favorite ships and manufacturers. Plus, a few new surprises. Touching down at Tobin Expo Center, November 17th. Alrighty, zombie pig. They put our favorite color up there, the old purple. Let's do a breakdown here, gang. Um, okay, we're going back. We already know where we're going here. Everybody's heading in. Pardon me. I want to do a little bit of a breakdown. All your favorite ships. All your favorite ships. Now, one of the things here, the theme is purple. And there is a manufacturer whose theme is purple, and that is who? Does anybody know who the theme is? They use purple? Because I'm curious to see what you guys think. This is them talking about the chefs. Plus, uh Plus a few new. Now, we did this the other day. I did this with Admiral the other day. All right. Yes, that's right, BBG. Good talk. Good talk. Okay. So let's look at this. This is the what? The storm? What do you guys think? That the storm? I think that's the storm. Let me cut my speed down a little bit here. I think that's, that's the storm. That's, that's right? a normal storm, yeah. Okay, all right. Few news. Okay, Argo, right? SRV. Plus a few new surprises. Surprise. Okay, now that's a tumbrel something. It could be part of the storm. But that would be repetitive. And I think the reason why it's not the storm. That's a variant of the storm. Yeah, this has a different color. Uh, right. If you look at the, like, the rubber, see the rubber parts on the, on the side of the, the Over here? storm? Yeah. Middle section to the bottom of the, the tower to the left. You get this like in the back behind it, right, right around there. 
And so you've got this little, yeah, exactly. You've got that part there. You have a little islet as well to the left of that, going to the left to the, you know, to, off to the ship's, uh, to the vehicle side. And if you go back to the green one, you'll see it has like this rubber. You know, thing. so oh, okay, right. what you mean. Okay, it's yeah, a little different. Yeah, so it's a different design here. So that's a, so is that somebody's tumbrel vehicle? Are Everything guys... Admiral Kusnagi is saying is wrong. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh my god! All right, forget everything you said. All right. So, what do you think? Is that a tumble vehicle, Montoya? What do you think? That is just the storm. It is the part that launches the uh, the flares or something like that. It's not a new vehicle. Okay. Now, now I will say this: this little rubber thing here, Admiral, is on the other one. See it here, the black thing on the right. Yep. It is here. But my problem is that it's a different color, but this is a gray and this is a green. That might be the same thing. Montoya might be right. He might be right this time. No, it's yeah, a different variant. Name one it's time I've been wrong about anything ever. Uh, when the game was coming out. Okay. Well, yeah, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what else we got. Uh, now this one's a freaky one. They make it look like they're focusing on the Redeemer back there, but that's a picture. The reflection in the glass. Right. Yep. So what is this? The, this scene and the two following it are actually one ship. It is the unannounced ship, which we do not know about yet. All right. And I said I was going to look and see. Is that the, the, the I know the triangle look is Gatak. Doesn't mean it's the Raylan, though. Does not mean it's the Raylan. It could be a different Negative. Gatak ship. Raylan is in white box as far as we know, but it is not going to be ready, although it will be for sale. Okay. Um, possibly a hologram, maybe. I don't know, but uh, that this is whatever the new yeah. mid-sized ship that we saw in the silhouette is. Oh, the one that everybody kept saying was a freaking um, Giant Fury. Fury. Yeah, yeah. So it ain't a Fury then? Negative. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. The thinking, yeah, right. Captain Jones in your chat calling it, saying it's a mid-sized Gatak. Ooh. Oh, I've heard theory boy. crafting of a starter ship. Uh, I think it looks too large to be an alien yeah. starter. Yeah. Wow. I did that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What the heck is that? It's red. So it ain't the freaking uh, Sontoki Eye. That's a bright red, and I don't recognize any of the design stuff here at the top. If that's a thruster or is that something ornate, I can't tell. But it doesn't look like a vehicle. Nobody's got any ideas in chat? Nope. I the guess Tura's not. saying it's a three-floor Gatak starter ship. That, yeah, I've seen the sketch of that. Some people are thinking it's got like these three arms and when it comes down, the two arms move forward so it looks like a fury in the silhouette. Very plausible. I guess we find out in one week. Yeah, yeah, seven days. Possibly count. the interior of it. Okay, that one there. That could be... This could be... That's Suntucky. the toilet on the alien ship. That's Suntucky Eye. <laughs> the toilet. That could be Suntucky Eye. This could be Suntucky Eye here. That thruster thingy over here looks familiar. Uh, I would say these images are the unannounced ship because the Suntucky Eye, we've seen plenty of images for. They wouldn't give us sneak peeks of it because we've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I think this is all unannounced. Okay. My opinion. So thanks for coming in and crashing my theory. Appreciate that. Okay. Oh, anytime. Well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm confused on these last ones. Like you said, the first ones are identifiable, but once we get past this guitar looking thing, all this in here is weird. Yeah, I don't know what any of that is. I've seen this thruster somewhere, though, before. Is that bad new? No. I, this... I've seen this somewhere. Does anybody recognize that? Gian. It is Gian. Okay. Oh, yeah, and it's got the purple coming off of it. So this might be, like Montoya said, it might be part of the unannounced alien ship. Okay. All right, fair enough. All right. Um, 
Montoya, since you're here, um, what are your thoughts about uh, IAE this year in comparison to past years post citizen kind? Uh, I was saying earlier that I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to have interest in coming in for the free fly this year. Oh, yeah. So I think we're going to see record numbers of free fly. Uh, the Sizen Khan and Star Engine demo, which we saw caught the attention of Asmon and uh, Doctor's Respect and hundreds of other big content creators for the first time. We're like, oh, like, is this what they've been working on? Their audience of literally millions of new eyeballs uh, have just seen Star Sizen for the very, very first time or reminded of its existence in a very long time. Uh, so when they see a free fly event, I think the servers are going to get smashed. I think everyone watching your show right now is going to be crying and upset that the servers are dying. <laughs> but uh, I do think we see a, a wreck. I'm going to go on a limb here and say record breaking November. Mm. Uh, you have an unannounced alien ship, which we know are usually pricey around. The, can we estimate 250, 300? Mm. What for the size? I mean, we don't even know. But we've got the variants on the Zeus, which we know there's a fourth variant. Um, we know the Scout is on sale. And whatever unannounced uh, ship they still have, look, they still need to crack over 100 million for the year. And I think they're saving uh, some surprises for the IAE. Yeah. Let me ask Admiral, too. Um, both of you guys can comment on this. You know, usually the opening and closing are big days for CIG for, for showing something. So let's work under the assumption that First of all, they've never opened up with alien ships. That's that's this is the first time they've ever done that. So, assuming Gatak is going to be the the highlight, assuming, um, and then let's assume that RSI. What there has been rumors of RSI putting out that mining ship that no one was expecting, the fourth mining ship, the one between the Mole and the Orion. Uh, if they were to put that out, if and I'm not saying guys, I'm not saying this is going to happen. If that were to happen, those would be two big sales for them. Uh, Montoya just alluded to the fact that we've got Crusader with its Spirit series. We've got Drake with its Cutter series. We've got Argo with the SRV. Um, is there anything else that could drop in here with any of these other manufacturers, or are they all going to be stuff we've already seen before? Aegis, uh, Tumbrel. Well, Tumbrel's got the Storm. Origin. Consolidated Outland, Grey Cat, Kruger, Anvil, Mirai. Do you think any of those well, any of those will be well, anything? You mentioned, you mentioned Consolidated Outland real quick. So they could drop the uh, module for the, for the base building. Potentially, it's an industrial type uh, module. They don't have a physical thing available. Um, they could sell that. Yeah, we have. I mean, everybody. modularity's been a big thing they've been talking about. I don't know if do we have anything, though, that's. That, I'm, I'm curious as to what they're going to introduce that brings the first level of modularity. Will it still remember originally it was supposed to be the retaliator? Be the retaliator, yeah. Right, originally. And it's it's on the, the short list to come out soon. Uh, it, it is on the short list. You're right. I, I for, for it me. is. It is on the short list. I don't know, Montoya. Do you think any of these other folks will drop anything, or will it just be between uh, the ships that we already know, and then Katak and RSI will introduce something maybe new? Well, we know RSI Galaxy, the medium, the Galaxy for base building needs to come out. Uh, I don't know about another mining ship. I think from the Mole to the Orion, do you need something in between? I don't think no, you do. No, they said they're putting it out. Oh, they're having it, yeah. But is that confirmed? Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. last year. Last year. Oh. It's, supp it's supposed That's to be surprising. big enough to carry a vehicle in it. So it's between oh, the Mole really? and the Orion. Yeah, there's a four. What do I know about Star Citizen? <laughs> <than that? laughs> well, mining's not your thing. So it's, it's But also the 600i was mentioned to have Ooh, a rework. military or armored variant. Ooh. Boy, that'd be interesting. Right. They are supposed to be doing the rework on the 600. So it, and usually when they work on something, they work on a bunch of those some things for that manufacturer. Um. Okay, well, so I mean, at, at, mm -hmm. at bare minimum, um, Gatak revealing that medium sized ship is going to be in the center of the showroom floor on the first day. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a big seller for whatever it is. And at least one large unannounced concept that we have no clue about. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. thinking. Because I, I thought SizenCon, they were definitely going to save the ammo for something big. Mm -hmm. you know, here's the, the new Kraken or Kraken sized ship, but it right. never came. Yeah. So maybe they're saving it for this. We'll see. Yeah. Um, one what, other what I keep hearing about is the Anvil 
you know, capital ship. Everybody wants like a military <laughs> anvil ship, but that's just hearsay. And well, I was about to ask both of you guys, you know, there have been this call for anvil to produce some form of a cap. Um, they're the major military manufacturer for the UEE. RSI has them. Uh, Aegis has them. But uh, Anvil's biggest ship that's is it is is the um, the uh, Liber is the Liberator. That's their biggest ship. Um, do you guys think that they will ever produce? I mean, c capital ships are a big deal for CIG. Do you think that they'll ever put out something that would be? capital scale for battles or do you think they'll keep it with just Aegis in uh in RSI? I think it's if I may field the question there, Admiral. Um sure. I feel when it comes down to fundraising, mm -hmm. they need to right. squeeze what they can. And capital ships always surprise me the people that actually put out the money to buy I go, who's gonna buy this for two thousand dollars and then they sell out. They sell out in no time at all. <laughs> So um, the people with money do like it. And can you have a, a cap ship from every manufacturer? Why not? Mm. If you want it, Crusader cap ship, right? As Captain Jones in the chat saying. Okay. Admiral, what including do you the alien manufacturers. We have yet to see an alien yeah, cap ship. Yeah. I, I wonder if they'll ever do that. That's I've always wondered about that. Um, I mean, I think they'll do it on the NPC side. I've always wondered whether they'll give that to the players. That would be interesting to see if they do. Um, no, I, I agree. Um, certainly it's in the military realm of ships. Like when we look at uh, mining, we've got RSI, Argo, Greycat, uh, MISC. So you could see ships within those manufacturers, say, have a competing ship against a prospector, the MISC prospector. Um, so there should be eventually what I would assume is an Argo one-man mining ship, just like any other BMW, Mercedes competition, you know, like here, et cetera. Mm -hmm. but, but the fact that Anvil is like the, you know, uh, forming, you know, McDonnell Douglas, you have, you have all those, you know, DOD yeah. type manufacturers, then yeah, you, you could expect to see an Anvil capital ship for military. It's like, a, like, like fighting just cargo moving captain jones saying that the banner merchantman is a cap size ship yes yes You're yes not wrong All right but 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 it grew into that it was not yeah. originally originally it was a it was a blockade runner and it was much much smaller uh over the years cig just kind of took it to the next level um and it became a capital even though it was their flagship for their military if they ever got into any scuffles um but we will see uh, let me ask you guys on that final day, and I'm trying to look it up on this on the site right now. I may have to shrink this down some. Um, <clears throat> the last days, CIG has something down here that they did last year. Uh, it was their gear. Some of you may have noticed that. Oh, I'm not under the right uh, count. Shoot. Um, give me one second here. Some of you, all, I, uh, Vavrik shared this with me the other day. CIG has consolidated gear. Did you guys see that? Are you talking about armor and weapons? Yeah. Into a pack? Yeah. yeah. Um, and on the last day, uh, before the final, final days, they do have a period set aside specifically um, for gear. Let me see if I can go to the subscriber store here. Um, here we go. Um, some of you guys may or may not be aware of this. This is in the subscriber store, but uh, CIG took some of their old armors here. And now you, instead of buying parts and pieces, they've uh, made them all where you get everything, the set for $14. Uh, and they've done that where they've just kind of did that across the board here with these armors. Um, I wish they had made the radiation suit a full suit. I, I hate that they just did the helmet here. But anyway, um, do you guys think that this is not profitable? It's not the word I want to say, but the fact that CIG does designate uh, a day specifically. Um, this is the wrong browser. Give me one second here. Let me go back uh, here. Um, best in show weapons and armor. Um, I don't know. Was that popular with people last time around? 
The last one was the Artemex armor set with the sniper rifle. I think it was a red armor set. I don't remember which one, but right. it, they, that was, I believe, the first the time I saw them put an armor and weapon set for sale at the same time, and it uh, sold me. Yeah, said, yeah, I'll buy this. Yeah, and that was that's no not a cheap buy either. I think that the red armor set was like sixty two bucks or something. Uh, but you got like uh, six pieces of armor from that mistake. I mean, it's a lot. You got a lot of stuff for it. Don't get me much. wrong. Was it right? So uh, the reason I bought it, like Chad will just say, that if I die, I can uh, I can just get right back if I do a character reset. <laughs> right. right. So I'm I'm assuming that when you buy these armor sets, there will come a point in time where you go to a terminal and you go, uh, you know, I died on some random moon or planet. I'd like this armor set back, and insurance will get the armor back for you. So uh, that is the the selling feature for me, and I guess for everyone else on those. Okay. Is that it's just a way to eventually you'll be able to recall them. And just get your favorite armor set all the time. Yeah. I, I didn't bite on that one. I bought on the one that was before that, the weird looking kind. You know, the one with the hose on the front. Uh, that, yeah, but that's the one I got. The rhyme. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. looking at them now, though. Yeah, I can't find the stupid set now. But um, is that a, is that a, that's not a subscriber set, is it? That's just a regular gear. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, see, look at that, Montoya. You got deep pockets, 62 bucks. Oh, no, I didn't buy that. Oh, you didn't buy this set? Just just the, the oh, Aquarius just... Tech Artemex Red oh, for $14. Oh, you just bought the one. Oh, okay. I thought you had yeah, went deep. I thought you went Wait. all the way for the uh, whole collection. I look like kind of millionaire to you. <laughs> I'm kind of globalist. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe you went all the way. I'm like, oh, boy, you got deep pockets. All right. Well, well, with, with my 100 subs, actually, 100, I got 120 subs, by the way. I'm, I'm oh, that's right great. Now. Congratulations. <laughs> you guys, make sure you all check out Montoya, by the way. Uh, Montoya but, comes on. Every day. I'm only on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but you guys can go see him on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, okay? <laughs> now I have to stream because he said so. But on the on the topic of 62 bucks, I, that's insane that yeah. this is what they're charging for armor sets. That's what it is with 30% off, brother. It's yeah. 90 Oh, 89. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh -huh. If those are black and yellow armor sets. You'd buy it. I'd say, you know what? It. I'll bite the bullet. Just so, so I always have them. I can always get them back at any point in time. And I can use them for the next thirty years of playing this game. Then, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, they're, 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 that's how a lot of people feel about their armor. They they see a certain st armor that they like, and that that's it. You know, they get it. You know, um, and they like it. I, I don't get me wrong; the red does look good. I, I wasn't that impressed with it, but every time I see somebody walking around in it, it looks freaking good. It really does. And I'm just trying not to buy it, but it does look good. Um, but yeah, that's 62 bucks is beyond my, my thing for the armor. Um, oh, armor. But well, I did most of the other. time, I mean, you're, you're running out the, 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 the hab wearing the traditional white yeah. flight suit and your white helmet and off yeah, you go. Exactly. See, this is what I bought. I bought the, this one here. Oh yeah. Uh, I did drop 60 on that when they got me. Stuff. I, I, how yeah. I have that too. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, was this given to us at any point? Or did I no, buy that? <laughs> no, they, they bought this. Yeah, you probably oh. bought it. Yeah, because okay, you they got, got the weapons and yeah. everything. I, I got yeah. that one. Yeah, that, <laughs> that red does look good, though. I'm, I better stop looking at it. Okay. Um. Anyway, that's uh that's it for this week, gang. We've covered everything. Uh, Invictus is not Invictus. IE once again is just seven days away. Um, and so uh, I, hopefully we'll see you guys there next week. We're going to do a little bit more as we lead up to it. Um, and uh, but by next Thursday, I'm not sure if I'll do a show that day or not, but we'll see. Uh, but I do have Montoya here, and I do want to uh, drop something. I know Tuesday I mentioned this a little bit, um, but since oh. Montoya's here, I'm going to put him on the hot spot. Uh, oh, Mon no. Montoya and I have been thinking about this for a long time, talking about doing a podcast. Talking oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about doing this idea of a podcast that is um, about news and about the world and about everything from life to politics to opinion. And uh, we are really thinking about kicking this off at the beginning of December. I think the date is December 2nd. It'll be a Saturday that we're talking about. So I want to, real quick while you guys are here, uh, throw a one in if you think you would be interested in checking us out. Put a one in chat real quick. Because I'm trying to tell Montoya that there will be people who will probably so, like to tune in and hear what we have to the say. challenge we face, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the rule in my Discord and your community is no politics, no religion. We're here for gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, 
a lot of time where I log in, in the morning, I see Griff, you know, we'll just be talking about what happened in the news overnight. Hey, did you see this happened? That happened, you know, and sometimes it's political, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's just uh, local events, you know, a local hamburger dealer sold a record number of hamburgers, whatever it is, like we just chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, is this something we should just do? Will people be interested? Um, so I know there'll be a fair amount of people like, no, I'm a, I want to get away from news and politics. And other people are like, yeah, we just can hang out. Yep. So uh, we can try all right, we're gonna premiere. I'm gonna premiere you guys unless you see the title of the show. Oh you no! See the title? Already. We're gonna show them this, the, <laughs> this is the title of the show, guys. What do you think? What do you guys think? How's that look? Is it a is it a yes or a no? What do you think? Why am I in black? I'm not black. I'm not white. <laughs> well, your hair. <laughs> see, BBG says yes. There you go. See there, we've got we've got one yes. Okay. Oh, big black gaming is biased. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust what he says. <laughs> Praetor's cracking up laughing. Yeah, I know. You guys like it. But the idea is that it's in black and white. You know, it's like, you know, what people write and they read and stuff like that. You know, see, look, people are saying, yes, they're digging it. Well, I said, well, shouldn't it be like not black and white because there's more nuance and shades of gray? Shouldn't but you're the first it? you're the first person who will say that there is right and wrong. Yes, you always say that. No, some things are just right and wrong. Don't listen to what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a fine line between black and white. Absolutely. You're, you're absolutely right, Ted. I'm, I'm, having, I'm getting kind of hints of uh, that old show Crossfire with Tucker Carlson. Well, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm Crossfire was <laughs> can, can in my I head. Can I conservative and you be like the bleeding that, liberal? That's fine. So <laughs> Crossfire was in my head when I was coming up with this. Look at, look at, oh, okay. we're looking with Black and Alexa. Oh, was it Black and Alexa? How about Ebony and Ivory? There we go. We can do that. We're going to have the, the whole song play at the beginning, too. Look, I'll only do this if I can wear my MAGA hat. Yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen. We're going to give you guys more information as time comes up. We know it's not everybody's cup of tea. We know, again, and that's why we're we're kind of hemming we'll this out shot. with our yeah. audience and people who do like listening to us. We know some of you will come. Some of you, it's not your thing. And we get that. Trust me. Uh, like Montoya said, a lot of us come to gaming to get away from the world. But we also feel that part of the solution to helping the world is to talk about some things because the only way we're going to get through stuff is to talk about it. So that's going to be our purpose for doing that. Anyway, um, <laughs> did that. Gotta wear a bow tie. I know. All right. Well, listen, we're getting ready to get up and set you guys up for a raid. Uh, I want to say thank you to Admiral Kusanagi, to Kai Zen, and of course to my good friend Montoya, who dropped in to hang out with us. I'm going to send you guys over to Angry PC Tech. If you guys have never seen this guy, he is a developer. Uh, he does really cool coins. He did the coins, the um, the uh, challenge coins for uh, Ultima Fuel for Segalian. And uh, he is just a really, really great guy. And um, I want you guys to go over and check him out. Uh, let him know that you came over from Griff when you get over there. Uh, don't forget about uh, tonight, Soul Talk with Fast Cart, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Saturday, Soul Voices with me, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And Sunday, we continue up with Citizen Con with episodes four and five. Uh, so hopefully you guys will join us for that. And uh, until I see you guys later, as always, take safe, take care of yourself. Peace, love, and soul. See you soon. Ciao. Good exit.